The automotive industry plays a vital role in India's GDP. But, as we all know, it's a major contributor to India's air pollution too. And so, any discussion on policies related to the mobility transition in India must include a holistic assessment of several factors. At the recently concluded COP28, the agreement to transition away from fossil fuels has become a major step for the world's fight against climate change. Hearing no objection, it is so decided. India has been a significant contributor and voice, thanks to Prime Minister Modi leading the conversation as the president of G20. We plan to achieve 50% non-fossil installed capacity by 2030. We've been consistently reducing our grid emission factor each year with more substantial initiatives. Several amendments in the power sector has made renewable energy access to individual households extremely easy and substantially cheaper. But one in particular has taken favor of the environmentally conscious penetration of solar energy in individual houses, housing complexes, and through microgrids has its own benefits. When you're looking at solar power, a small section of, uh, of your terrace of an office building can suddenly power up so much, you can actually be feeding enough power back to the grid after your consumption. The electricity bill used to be very high, and especially in summer, this used to be 40,000, 45,000 rupees, which was quite expensive. When I heard about the policy, when I saw that people are getting benefit of that, we installed that and it has really helped. The cost has reduced and whatever I've invested, I think by the end of this year, we will be able to get that back. In fact, it has made EVs an even more climate-friendly solution by further reducing their lifetime emissions. So if it's about 11 or 12 rupees, per uh, kilometer with a petrol car, my running cost comes down to less than a rupee with, uh, with the electric car. Now when I go ahead and even make that power source come in from solar power that uh, feeds my car, I've zeroed out that entire cost. So basically I'm anyway saving just on running costs something like uh, 12 to 15,000 rupees every month. While urban areas worldwide associate automobiles with deteriorating air quality, the issue persists despite strict norms. India imported 185 million tons of petroleum at a cost of 55 per litre in 2021, the bulk of which was used in the transportation sector. Hybrid vehicles, relying on combustion engines, continue to pose challenges. Although plug-in hybrids offer the possibility of electric-only mode, the shift to true EVs appears to be the ultimate solution for cleaner air in cities. Only when cities mandate a complete phase out of combustion and combustion products will this problem be addressed. True EVs are the true future of safer cities, with cleaner air for healthier citizens. The energy demand in our country is rising, and around 98% of this demand in the transportation sector is met by fossil fuels. A developing nation like ours that needs industrialization, that needs so much power, the natural transition then to go ahead and, up and feed this power for the industry comes from, unfortunately, a lot of thermal power plants. I have a, a business in petroleum as well, and we know the scarcity of fuel is heightening. And we, how much would we exploit our natural resources? We'll have to finally find out a way where uh, things are not dependent on something which is generated by the earth. And this is where we, we can try and ensure that some amount of this transition can happen to more renewable forms. Electricity generated through renewable energy sources instead of coal will definitely move the needle towards preserving the country's energy security. Large coastlines and good solar and wind resources will allow for easy generation and distribution of electricity through state and national grids. A hybrid vehicle strategy based on use of combustion power is therefore a compromise when compared to an elegant solution like pure EVs. 
owners of electric vehicles are liberated from the uncertainties and inconveniences associated with traditional fuel sources. It automatically becomes a financial and psychological benefit. EV ownership offers further advantages too, advantages which provide relief in terms of money, time, and effort. The country needs constant sources of power. Your decisions now have to be about whether you want a, a coal-powered uh, source of power, or do you want to transition to uh, something that's greener? I think government should uh, give better policies for EVs, charging centers, because then the charging stations will be an issue. Once the charging is available more, then the usage of that will, will enhance the use of EV and decrease the use of the fossil fuel. The emergence of electric vehicles, EVs, is transforming the energy sector, giving rise to a new class of entrepreneurs, the energy entrepreneurs. This burgeoning revolution, fueled by the energy freedom offered by EVs, is reshaping the traditional energy landscape in several innovative ways. Dedicated fast charging infrastructures are not just catering to the growing demand for efficient charging solutions, but also becoming a lucrative business opportunity. Energy entrepreneurs are opening up avenues to create service hubs around these stations, such as cafes or retail outlets. Common charging infrastructures are fast becoming a convenient charging option for residents, creating a new revenue stream for RWAs while promoting the adoption of EVs within communities. Homeowners can generate their own electricity to power their vehicles, making it a 100% clean commute with individual solar rooftop solutions. If you see in our society, there are 72 bungalows. Out of that, I think 45 must have installed solar. It is much cheaper, much economical, less pollution, good health. Solar is one thing which is coming from outside. The sun uh, will never fade away. It is the best thing to switch on and we would probably adapt to more EVs once the range is even higher. On my rooftop today, my solar panels generate almost 900 units of power. And for my home consumption, which may be about 200 to 300 units of power, I'm actually producing far more. And what I'm also doing is providing back into the grid. So I'm not just feeding my own electric car, but actually powering up the industries, maybe powers other electric vehicles too. The Government of India's open access legislation enables further access to renewable energy for consumers through innovative models like peer-to-peer -peer exchanges and micro-investments. This new energy paradigm, underpinned by EVs and supportive policies, is all about empowering communities and individuals, fostering a more equitable and resilient energy landscape. Over the past decade, with advances in battery technologies and storage solutions, amendments and policy changes have been put in place. There should be little or no confusion on this subject. Pure electric propulsion technology has become the most efficient solution to our long-term mobility transition. Increasing adoption and user confidence has pushed the market to accept the technology shift to pure electric vehicles as a way forward. In conclusion, the evolving energy paradigm, supported by EVs and progressive policies, aims to empower communities and individuals fostering a more equitable and resilient energy landscape. The market's increasing acceptance of pure electric propulsion technology emphasizes the efficiency and effectiveness of EVs in our long-term mobility transition. Staying committed to tried and tested EV technology is crucial for overcoming challenges and moving towards a better, cleaner, and safer future. <laughs>